Alright, today, like, like I told you guys, I want to try to give you a little bit of information about what I do when I'm out here on the water and tips. Like I said, it's cold, so I want to wear some kind of a insulated uh, overalls or coveralls of some sort. Sometimes we use ski bibs. These are Tidewee. The brand is Tidewee. Here's the logo somewhere on the screen. Probably around over here. And uh, they are made for hunting and fishing. I'm really glad these are solid color. I don't look like a walking duck blind. I'm not hunting today, I'm fishing. So the fact that these are a solid color are really nice. Now the coat that I'm going to wear is also a Tidewee. Both of these, um, both of these Tidewee, the coat and the uh, overalls or the bibs are, if you see this electrical connection, it's a USB. They're, they come with a battery pack, they're heated. They have uh, heating coils inside. So if you're in really cold weather, you could run a battery pack. It's not that cold here, it's only around 30. So not too much wind. Um, I just don't wanna be cold, so I like to wear these. This is the brand right here, Tidewee. Let me see if I can make it where you can see that. There you go. That's the logo. They didn't really ask me on the coat part of it what I wanted. They just sent me one. Um, they just sent me a, some cold weather gear. And this particular coat happened to be the real tree camo pattern. So I didn't have a choice. I'm fine with it. I mean, I don't mind wearing real tree. It's just, uh, I'm not hunting, we're fishing. So I will tell you though, I've been out several times wearing this coat and I, I sweat in it. Like it, it's that warm. It's warm enough that, that I'll sweat in the coat. So that's kind of cool. Not that I sweat, but that it's warm enough for me to sweat. And I know you guys up north laugh at us in Texas for complaining about it being cold and it's only and it's 30 degrees and no wind but if you live down here I don't know there's an old saying that you got thin skin if you live in the south and maybe that's true maybe it's not but I tell you what I get cold so usually if I'm catching I'll forget about it but nonetheless I'm already sick and there's no reason for me to be irresponsible when I can be warm. I've got the Tidewee wading boots on. <laughs> and uh, so that makes me waterproof up to almost my knees. So, I mean, I don't want to get my, my overalls dirty or wet, muddy, but at least if I get in the water a little bit or have to, whatever, you know, you know what I'm saying. I get a little water in a kayak, it's not gonna make my feet cold. I'm tired of talking. Let's get the kayak done off the truck and get in this creek and see if we can catch some crappie. I'll show you guys some other stuff here in just a little bit. It's a pretty good hole. It's got a lot of shad in it. A whole lot of shad in it. Got some crappie underneath there too. That's why the fish come in this creek. For that food right there. See all that? That's why they're here. This is a pretty public place, so you're going to recognize this if you've ever been here. And if you do, just keep it to yourself. We don't need to spread this around and bring a thousand people out here. Looking for some reactionary bites, but I'm not sure I'm going to get any of those. That much food around? All they do is eat. A little easier to entice a fish that's hungry. Got him. There we go. There we go. Oh, look at that sucker. Oh my goodness. All right, guys. First fish in the boat. It's about a 14 and a half crappie. What? All right, I'm gonna show you this. That's the fish. All right. Good, goodness mercy. Get him on a string, dog. All right. 
All right, that's the first fish. But here's what I'm gonna show you. I'm catching this fish, these fish on, on, we, I, we, this is actually my brand of soft plastics, Top Dog Crappie Baits. It's a gold Circle H jig head with green eyes. You see that? In a 16th ounce, that's a uh, loop knot about a quarter inch long. And of course I bent my hook point out. So when I'm talking about bending out my hook point, the hooks generally come in a perfect half circle and the point of this hook is going to have a trajectory that lines up with the eye of this jig head. Well, if that happens, then you've only got this little bit of space to catch tissue. Well, if you bend your hook point out, the odds you catch them by the roof when they're coming out is much better than if that hook was bent in a perfect circle. Now, if you're going to do a lot of catch and release fishing and stuff, you might not want to bend your hooks out, but if you're keeping, definitely bend them in your hookups number one you're going to catch more fish and number two you're going to catch them in a better place so they don't come off when you're reeling them up all right let's get this back in the water because i see more fish and i want to catch them look guys i'm in front of my truck like literally i didn't have to go nowhere kind of stupid and you could literally like you could jig and bobber this stuff you don't have to i'm vertical jigging because i like to do that but you don't have to there's some big old fish in here today big old chomper they're just cruising under this shad looking for something to eat it's cruising here we go got him yep oh these are all big pre-spawn crappie guys oh my goodness oh my goodness this one right here, I definitely, definitely, guys, I've caught a lot of big crappie lately. This is the biggest one I've caught. Okay, I want to show you something. I'm going to show you something. Look at this one. That thing is enormous. All right, look in there where I hooked him. You see how I got him in the roof of the mouth? The reason I got him in the roof of the mouth is because I bent my hook point out. If my hook point was still rounded off, that hook would have slid out of his mouth when I hook, when I set the hook, and it would have caught on his lip right here. And the odds that he would have fought fought his way off the the line is much much higher than catching him back there in that hard tissue. When I catch him in the back like that, I typically have to use needle nose to get the hook out because it's so tough. But guys, that is a ginormous crappie. That thing is huge. Yeah, I'm just I'm just sitting here playing, guys. I've got I I, mean, I didn't even need to leave the truck. I didn't even need to leave the bank. I didn't need the kayak at all. Like this is crazy. We're gonna need a new bait because that fish just tore that one up. So we've got really big crappie here because there's so much food. Like so much food. They are loving the habanero, and we're going to stick with it. I used it on uh, one of my East Texas videos. I'm back in the 972 now. These are our dogs. All right, fish just sitting under the shed, just chilling. <laughs> Look, there's my truck. <laughs> All right, let's just pitch out and see if we can get something interesting. What we'll do is we'll just dangle this down there get it down there until we get near get a crappie swimming by and then we'll see if we can present to them can't present to a fish if they're not in the area there's there's a couple out here let's just raise up and go to them here we go here we go oh i think that's a catfish if he he hits that got him Oh, this is going to be a cat. I don't think that's a crappie. He looked too long. And when he gets to the surface, he's going to go nuts. Look at that rod. Oh, yeah, that is a... Oh, yeah, he's going to be hot. I got to keep him out of those brush. Oh, if he breaks off, he just does. But I know that's a cat. <laughs> 
Oh my gosh. I can tell what it is just by looking at it. Oh my gosh. It's a big blue. Get my fish grips. If I can get him to the if I can get him to the thing, I'll keep him. I like I like catfish. Oh my god, it's a striper. He's about freaking 35 inches long. I didn't think about that. I forgot I'm fishing with her striper. fish grip get on there oh I forgot I didn't even think about that good lord look <laughs> what y'all think <laughs> that's ridiculous <laughs> that is ridiculous We gotta send oh we gotta send Anthony a picture. I'm gonna let him go. Got him. Whatever that is, I got him. Oh, he's mad. He's hot. Give him a little bit more. Oh, that is not a crappie. It's gonna be another striper. That's fine. I'll take stripers. Uh, let him swim till he's tired. Oh yeah, another big striper. I might have to start keeping a striper. That's a big one. So we can get him over here to me. Have to start keeping some stripes. Uh, it's hard with the 10 foot to get them up here and lip them. Oh, look at that one. He's a little shorter than the last one. But he's he's a keeper. Catching them on hob and arrow. Don't don't let him break off. Uh, that gum. He's turned to where I can't get a fish grip on him good. Open the mouth. Open the mouth. There he is. There he goes. There we go. Striper number two. Look at that one. Striper number two. All right, unhook him and let him go. Oh. <laughs> unhook him and let him go. <sighs> Got him on habanero. Yeah, pretty fish, don't wanna hurt him. Don't wanna hurt him. All right, so the Roman fish or striper all, I don't know if they're all striper though because crappie do the same thing but we see what we catch another fish or two otherwise we may be putting striper on the uh, on the stringer man starting to get out of, out of control as far as catching fish goes if I'd have brought a way to deal with those striper I probably would have kept them I didn't even think about it didn't even cross my mind that there would be striper in here there we go so we got good little setup there and then we'll see what we catch can't all be striper. I guess it. I guess it could. Try to get a little closer to the brush. See if I can get a crappie out of there. Now I don't want to. Now I just want to catch stripers. 
Here's one. Got him. Let's see if that's crappie. Oh, nope, that's a striper. Yep, that's a striper. <laughs> He's mad. <sighs> I thought that was gonna be a crappie because I caught him off the brush. Oh, putting this PC 10 foot and six pound suffix to the test. I'm telling you now, a 15, a 16 crappie, and then three striper in a row. Three striper in a row. This is gonna be another big one too. Yep, look at that. Yep, another big one. I don't wanna break off uh, the striper and have them with line and a hook in their mouth and all of that. So I think, oh, there he goes. He came off. That's good because I didn't want to break him off. So let's check our hook and see if he came off because it bent. No, looks good. Looks all right. I'm going to change hooks. Uh, all right, there's a loop knot, three loops. Suck it up to about an eighth of an inch. Pop it off the hook or the loop. I right. trim your tag end. Bend your hook up just a little, just to give you that extra little punch in the roof of the mouth. And then put your plastic on. Eat it. Got it. All right. Don't be a striper, I want crappie. Yes, sir. That will go on the stringer. That right there is about a 12 and a half or 13. About 12 and a half. And he's the smallest one we got. Hadn't left the truck yet. Hadn't even left the truck yet. Took me a sec. Get that one. Oh, another big one. Oh, he's barely hooked. Get in, get in, get in. Ooh, ooh. See, he came off. Told you he was barely hooked. He kind of nipped at it, and I still got him. That's part of uh, you know, doing those hooks right. <clears throat> and he's another monster. <laughs> another big dog. And we got some dogs today. Got us some dogs today. It's like all dogs. I think that's a crappie. Good one too. That's a nice one. Oh yeah. All these crappie are nice. Every single one of them. Well, see my truck? Oh, goodness. It's like having a lawn chair in the water. <laughs> like having a lawn chair in the water. Go from creek to creek to creek to creek and just catch fish. Yes, sir. Not a bad one. Got him. That's a striper. He's going to be mad when he gets to the top. Oh, buddy. Would never come out here with a 10 foot rod and six pound line trying to catch striper. <laughs> but I'm doing it, so might as well do it. <sighs> That's a fight, guys. Oh, this one must be a nice one. He is hard to get in. 
Hopefully he gets tired. Hopefully he gets real tired. Cause the cool thing about a 10 foot rod with a medium light tip is uh, fast action is the rods absorbing a lot of that pull. Oh goodness, that, that one's pulling. This one must be a big fish. Somebody's calling me. Can't answer though. Oh yeah, he's big. He's big. Get our fish grips out. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. I can get him over here. I don't want to break the line. Pete the rash is too much. <gasps> he broke. Dang it. I didn't want to let that happen. But. Uh, I knew that was going to happen if I got in close to the boat. It's okay. It's hard to catch. But the stripers that weigh 10, 15 pounds on six pound line. If you have a little fray in your line, you know, I don't want to break off. Uh, I don't want to break off and leave them with a jig in their mouth. I mean, that's something I don't want to do, but we've got to uh, fight them correctly and get them up to the boat. You know, just that's what we got to do. I'm not having too much trouble getting them to bite. And we're catching everything on habanero today. Not sure you guys got to see that fish, but I hope so. I hope you did. There we go. Uh -oh, check the line. I don't feel any frays. Just might catch another one. Never know. I might catch another one. Look at this color, guys. Isn't that sweet? That's a sweet color. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of watching the striper swim in and out of the screen. And I'm dropping my bait down in the water column where they're swimming. And then when they come by... I'm just kind of like jigging it in their face and, uh, and then pulling up swimming away from them and they're coming after it I mean I'm not having any trouble with them coming after it um, looking out there see what I see man I really hate that I wish I could catch that same one again and get that jig out of his mouth I don't like that I left a jig in him Gotta give him a second. Oh, what is that? Grubby, sweet. I had to give him a second. Think about it. Now take it. Ooh, that's a good one. Feels like a good one. These are all white crappies, so. Ooh, that's a black. <laughs> I just said these are all white crappie and I pull up a good black man I tell you what you just never know guys I'm, I'm sticking with habanero because it's doing me right and uh, chartreuse circle H jig head black crappie see a lot of blacks out here unless I'm fishing the rocks good oh yeah is good just just watching I'm just watching those limbs and uh, when I see 
sometimes the fish will come away from the limb make what looks like a little bump and when I see that little bump I just get close to it and see if it's a fish or not more often than not it's been one back there I see something back here I think maybe down here got him yeah sometimes you can't get him out of those branches oh yeah good crappie good little old crappie oh he's boogered is he just it's just a scar but I'm gonna let him go he's a little on the small side and he's got a scar Oh, that's a good one. Oh, that's a good crappie. That's a good crappie. Get in this boat. <laughs> good crappie. Look at that. Alright guys, so just so you see, I got my stringer here and uh, I got me a mess on that stringer. And then I just used a little, little carabiner and my stringer clip from Stinky Pants right here off the side of my seat. A little seat strap right above my tackle box. Works good. Every now and then they get frisky and pull on my seat, but... I ended the day on 16 crappie and seven striper. That's what I ended up landing. I gave the fish to some guys on the bank. They were really happy to get them. I really appreciate you guys watching the video, especially if you've made it this far. If you want to support the channel, watch another one of my videos. That's the best way to support us.